Hi everyone, welcome to Samantha K Crafts. Sam here and I'm going to quickly show you how to make this printer's tray display. Uh, the printer's trays are great, they can be used for um, storage or they can be used to make a mixed media piece like you just saw in the photo. So for the purpose of this video I'm making a mixed media piece. Uh, this is using the smaller version of the two trays and um, as you will see when I start putting bits together you can sort of pick how many uh, dividers you use you can pick where the dividers go so it really is great whether it be for storage or uh, for doing a project but when I um, designed these this is what I had in mind was this type of project so um, uh, the majority of the video is sped up because a lot of it is uh, real easy stuff or same stuff over and over again so the first thing I've done is pick um, a piece of paper this is from an 8x8 pad uh, and as you can see it's slightly smaller than the 8x8 pad so all I did was once I've built the outer edge and the base or the back of the tray up I have flipped it I flipped it over and I was going to use a pencil and I changed my mind and what I did was I sort of just pressed uh, around the edge so I got the groove in there and then I could sort of cut that line to make it fit I've just used some glue any glue will do here PVA glue to stick the backing in I went for this backing in the end and of course you could go for anything it doesn't have to be grungy it doesn't have to be letters like this. it could be anything you want you know decide on what you want uh, your project to be do you want it to be bright and happy do you want it to be vintage do you want it to be shabby chic um, I went for uh, this just because it looked like a printer's tray you know seeing it laying there like that it looks like a printer's tray and I thought it fitted well with the sort of theme that I was going for and some of the embellishments that I knew I had to sort of hand um now I'm just going to paint all of the edges in black gesso if you don't have black gesso you can of course use black acrylic I have uh more gesso than I have a uh, black acrylic so that's why I've used gesso also gesso gives that slightly more um, matte sort of finish and a slightly sort of toothier sort of look which I kind of wanted as well uh, when it comes to sort of doing the inside of the box here, you could see that I used you know the paint that on the brush I'm brushing it off so it's you know not as much on the brush before I'm then sort of spreading it over the background and I'm doing that just to break the background up so it doesn't look as pristine and as clear as it was and if you get some extra bits where you don't really want it you know use your fingers use a sponge use a cleaner brush or whatever to sort of rub it off a bit um, but don't be too precious just let it go where it's going to go don't forget you're going to be putting some dividers in there so it's not going to look as harsh as it does now you're also going to be putting other pieces in there uh you know like embellishments and knickknacks or whatever you know you, you fancy putting in there so it won't look as harsh as as this does like you've sort of smudged all out of the lines and and for those of us that like sort of uh, to be very neat and tidy and clean it is quite difficult to do um, but just go with it just go with it enjoy the process and realize that once you've sort of built this up it will it will sort of uh, all fit in and be as it as it should uh, so now I'm using a brown paint I think this is a dilutions paint I wouldn't recommend um, using a dilutions paint or something for this sort of project normally just because uh, they're water-based and so if water gets on there it will or, or you put another paint on top for example it will start to shift it however uh, I wanted a brown paint and this happened to be the best color brown that I had that would suit what I wanted and I'm pretty much uh, as you could see by when you looked at it closer then I'm dry brushing this again I'm uh, getting some on my brush and I'm brushing it off onto the scrap piece of paper to the side and that's allowing me to sort of dry brush it and as you saw from the close-up it's giving um, it's not covering it in brown you can still see the black coming through um, it takes the harshness off the black and gives it a sort of old wood sort of look I am also adding some bits again dry brushing the brown here and there giving it a rub with my finger to sort of it just again so it gives helps give that aged look to the project and takes down some of the black now I'm working on the outside it's going to be the same process again paint it black as you can see I've you know skipped ahead here all the sides are painted black there's no point me me showing you 
painting every single side black it, it's the same you're painting it black you don't need to be taught to suck eggs as, as they say um but you can really see here the dry brushing so the dry brushing leaves that good balance of the black there but it doesn't look as harsh but you can do it the other way you could do it brown and then you could dry brush the black on there uh to get this sort of effect I just find, I, you know, you'll probably end up with more black on there than brown. I wanted it the other way. I wanted more brown on there that, that, and showing through than the black. So it gives that real aged wood look. So it's more like a, you know, apothecary cabinet that you would find in sort of a, a cool little shop that you'd find down a back street somewhere. Um I'm talking about it in my imagination, of course, because I'm sure... Well, there probably is some of these shops do exist somewhere, but... Um, yeah, this is my imagination getting the better of me. So, but then it's good. It's good to to picture something in your head and have a little story behind it because it it helps you build up what you want more and see what you want more. Um, don't forget to do round the edges. You know the the tiny little edges that you can sort of see facing you, uh, and that's it. That's pretty much the back of my tray done. Um, I apologise for keep saying um. I don't know why I keep saying um. It's been a while since I've actually recorded any narrative for anything and I think my brain trying to think in amongst everything uh, else that I've got going on is making me erm a lot so I apologise for that it's probably quite irritating I'm irritating myself but hey ho oh just about to say it again there I've tried to stop myself so as you can see I have now painted all of the dividers and if you actually purchase um, these trays you get six divider six uh, pieces for each tray so for the small or for the large and you can use them all you can use none of them and they've got little slots at different points throughout the dividers and what it means is is you can position them where you want so at the bottom you can see that i've put some bottles in so if i um if the bottles were higher which i think you'll see in a minute some of the bottles are higher then i would position that shelf higher i'd position it in the next notches up as such if it's not you know and it was it was a lot shorter like say the one at the top is you position it shorter so you can really make it fit how you want it to fit without wasting any space or ending up with big empty sort of gaps so at the moment i'm just trying to decide what bottles i want to use what will look best where sorry about that um at the moment it is march 2020 and we are in the midst of the covid19 isolation period um and my seven-year-old is at home uh, as are you know many people's children and my husband who is meant to be supervising her uh was on the phone in the house she said she was going out on a swing and instead she's come and knocked on the door um and disturbed me part way through the recording so uh i it's not so much that i'm unhappy with her she's seven years old and she just wanted wanted to see me but uh, a little bit frustrated with my husband who couldn't just watch her through the window even though he was on his phone um makes yeah anyway that's another story so uh back to the video i have as you can see, been sort of sorting out what bottles I want where, and now I've sort of found the ideal size bottles for the ideal um, sections. I now becomes the fun task of filling them. So it's sort of just looking through my stash and just finding bits that I can sort of pop in them that make them look interesting, but still fit with the vintagey sort of uh, shabby chic theme that I'm going for. So. In this bigger one, I've sort of got a bit of, um, it's not really lace uh, because it's it's thicker than lace. Oh, I've, you know, my brain's gone as to what it's called, but, I'm, you know, it looks like lace. I'm sure you, you guys know what I mean, but uh, I've, I put it in one of the jars and then I sort of shook it so that it didn't look as perfectly pushed in and it sort of loosened it up a bit in there. Uh, in one of the other jars, I've got a bit of sort of brass chain that I've cut down and sort of that's spiralled into the jar. Um, now I'm deciding on another level that I want to put in. 
and as you can see that one's really narrow so you can see that we've got some sort of medium sized gaps some bigger gaps got some really narrow sort of gaps so you really can sort of do this as you want to I didn't have to put that off one in if I didn't want to but I've got a bit of space and it meant I could put something else in and add a bit of a bit more um stuff <laughs> stuff uh, to it so the next bottle I'm now filling with these micro beads I've gone for gold uh, because it's again the color sort of matches in more with what I want and I didn't realize just how static these things were <laughs> these things were so I actually poured them out on the lid of the box but they're, they're really static <laughs> um but anything just just go for your stash anything anything that you might think yeah, what else will I use it on or I'm not sure what other project I might might use this on but that'll look good in the jar or it fits with the project I'm doing you know if you were doing it all pr pretty and flowery and whatever you could sort of have dried herbs or flowers in the jars you could have a nice colorful ribbon you really can sort of put in there what you want uh, in this one here I have put a bit of uh, hessian so I've just cut the edge of the hessian off it was a hessian that's got the wire edge into it so it meant I could sort of shape it a little bit so it's not just sitting in there like the lacy bit is it's sort of more shaped in there uh, now I've got these I don't actually know what these are they're they were in an embossing set uh, but they're not they're not embossing flakes or embossing powder it, it's they're more just like enamel flakes I think they might be uh yeah so these are a shabby shabby pink or an antique pink this is a banana leaf this was a gift from the lovely denise uh, was it denise or emma one of the two lovely ladies emma or denise when we were at a show um got a bunch so that each of us had a, a bunch each and this is the first time I actually used it, but it was great. It looks really great, broken up into the jars. It looks like some sort of ingredient that a alchemist might use in one of their potions. So, uh, yeah, just adding that. So it's it's quite fun actually, sort of looking round um, your stash and looking through your stuff to just find bits that will go in there and look interesting, or that could potentially look like they could be something else. The biggest problem I have with my stash is where I don't actually craft that often anymore because more of what I do is geared around uh, producing the you know the crafting product for everyone to use a lot of my stash is in is in boxes or just all over the place or not quite organized in any sort of way shape or form and so it's when you've got all your stash um, about or you can get it out and it's in boxes and you can see what you've got you can almost think oh wow I've got that I can use that oh wow I've got that I can use that if it's away and it's in stuff you kind of forget what you've got so without getting millions and millions of boxes out and then going through it all and then stuff and then you get kind of fed up oh I've got all these boxes out everywhere and that it makes it a bit awkward so I am going to whilst we're in this isolation period and and you know perhaps business is a bit bit quieter than normal i am going to try and actually organize my stash because i do need to get back into crafting more regularly i love it uh, it's the same for me as it is for a lot of our other people it's a real um mental relaxation and release and stress release and but and it and it gets me back to remembering why i started the business and also um understanding more what i'm creating because obviously a lot of my creations used to come from i was crafting and creating stuff and it was what I wanted or what I thought would be useful or look good with what I was doing and now where I don't craft as often it's more trying to think about what people could would want or asking other people but if I get back into crafting again I will get that that flow again of oh yeah that'd be good and that'd be good and then you know and that's where then the creativity side for the end product will sort of come from again uh, which I think is a far better way to design or create from is by doing the craft yourself and enjoying the craft yourself and understanding what needs you have or what wants you have as a crafter. Uh, so I still do have my crafting brain and I still do understand them needs and wants, but I think definitely when you're crafting more, it sort of inspires you more to, to, to sort of design more bits that you need and want. Um, so yeah, so again, now the paint's dried uh, on the tray and uh, I don't think I'd done the dry brushing on the 
dividers. Uh, I'm just sort of adding some more of the dry brushing with a brown in. And, um, you know, this will just sort of help finish it off before I add all the bits in there properly. You saw me using a bit of hot glue there. I mean, you can use just a regular good PVA glue or a wood glue to secure the dividers in place. Obviously, if you're using it as storage, and so what you're storing in there might change and you might want to change the size of them, you know, uh, divided areas. Don't glue it. Don't glue it. And then you can change that when you want to change it. But if you're going to sort of display it up on the wall or something like that, you don't want the dividers falling out. If you're making a, a nice piece, you don't want the dividers falling out. So, yeah, I would probably secure it. Um, you could secure it with a good PVA or wood glue, like I was saying. But here, for quickness, I was using you know, some hot glue. It was just quicker and easier to sort of do. Um, and I do like my glue gun. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a great glue gun. It's a Bosch glue gun, I think. I got it from a DIY store. It was about £20. And, you know, gone are the days of uh, it leak, uh, a glue gun leaking glue everywhere or not being hot enough or not having a good nozzle on it or anything like that. It's a proper DIY one and it is fantastic for crafting. I, you know... I use mine all the time. I've had it for many years and it's, it is great. Um, yeah, so that's it. Now I've sort of got some of the bits in the bottles. I'm starting to add to the bottles onto the shelves uh, where I want them, positioning where I want them. And in a minute, I will start to sort of pick out some other bits that I may want. I'm sorry that I've waffled on uh, and in some cases not actually about the project but there's not really too much that I can say about the project. Like myself it's just handy to sort of just watch watch it see what's going on but you know you don't it's not it's not brain surgery you don't have to really think about it it's just putting bits together a bit of paint a bit of paper and putting bits together um, here I decided that I didn't want the glass bottle to be just really clean and tidy and whatever else so I'm using um, some embossing powder this is actually distress powder from Ranger and I've put it on I put a bit of uh, embossing ink onto the glass put some powder on heated it while it's still hot I've added, I've dipped it in the powder again, so some more sort of sticks to it, and I'm going to heat it again. Don't hold on to it; the glass will get hot. Don't overheat it too much if it's a thin bottle, because it will end up. Uh, you could potentially crack it. But what I did here was, you know, these are quite good quality bo bottles. I think these were from uh, Tim Holt. They're Tim Holtz bottles. They're good quality. They're quite thick. They're not sort of the the cheap ones from China. Not that there's anything wrong with them, and I've got some of them, uh, but they're not. You know, they're not cheap. The cheaper ones might be thinner and so they might not take as much heat. That's what I'm saying. Be careful. Um, I've put the paintbrush in to basically hold it still. It will get hot. Don't hold it with your fingers. And also, it being a small pot, your fingers would be too close to where you're heating it anyway. So, I'm doing that. I'm waiting for it to cool down. And it just... It just makes the bottle look like a dirty old bottle that's sort of been set on the shelf I did kind of then take a lot of it back off with the distress powders you're meant to kind of rub them afterwards anyway to sort of give a better distress look but I also it wasn't quite cool when I why did I say cool like that <laughs> cool like I'm a ghoul I don't know why I'm doing that um it wasn't quite cooled down when I wiped it but the I wiped some of it I just wanted it to look dirty I didn't want it to look like I just wanted it to look dirty and old like it sat on the shelf for a while now I'm filling it with some art beads these ones are prima ones uh doing two different sizes here I think there are lots of companies now that do art beads probably a lot cheaper than these prima ones were uh, I'm now adding some of that same distress powder inside just because the art beads look too white, too clean. I'd made this nice, dirty, grubby looking little glass bottle and then, you know, put bright, white, clean art beads in there. Um, it just didn't look right. So I added some of the same stuff I'd put on the outside. I added to the inside so it would mix in and sort of just make it look a bit, a bit more interesting in there, shall we say. So now I'm just deciding where this one goes. If you can hear a squeaking, by the way, I'm not sure if you can because I'm not sure if this microphone will pick up the noise. It happens to be the chair I'm sitting on. I promise you I'm not making 
funny noises and my bones whilst they do creak they're not creaking at the moment so um yeah it's the chair that I'm on so yeah I'm just putting bits in there I mean you don't you don't have to do this you can use it as storage you can create something that's lay, laying down I mean these um this is just what I had in mind when I designed these printers tray I kind of had in mind them for storage they are stackable but I had this in mind I like seeing these sort of projects with old actual old printers trays uh, these obviously aren't proper printers trays these are my take on a printers tray these are my um you know like a, cause some of the old printers trays they are fantastic and they really are gorgeous and sort of lovely old wood and that but they're really hard to get hold of and sometimes they're really expensive as well so this was just this enables me to create this sort of project uh, without breaking the bank and you know can do it as many times as I want to do it uh, because the materials are sort of easier to get hold of um, I decided in one of the sections to put a photo and this is just a bottle lid a bottle lid as you can see off of a coca-cola bottle and i there's no need to paint it or anything like that i'm happy with the silver look it's a, a kind of a it's not a real shiny silver otherwise i probably would have scuffed it up it's the edges are like a matte silver i've got a bit of hessian that i've kind of like bunched up and glued in there to hold it into place you can't see the back of the the bottle top you can just see the edges and like i say they're a nice matte silver and that makes a perfect piece to fit with my project. Um, as simple as that. So beer lids, um, just whatever, whatever type of lid, you know, whatever type of lid you've got. If it's if it's shiny and the shininess doesn't go because you're doing sort of a vintage or a shabby chic project, get some sanding paper and just scuff it down, or get some white gesso or black gesso and just uh, lightly sort of brush over it so it can sort of just take some of the shine down but there's lots of different ways to sort of uh, make something fit the theme that you want this happened to be an old watch it, it's never been a watch I've worn it was obviously something I bought a long time ago I don't know if I bought it as a gift or with the plans of making it into a project like this I don't know it's something that's been in my stash for a very very long time it was brand new um and it, I know I never intended to wear it. I've never been a sort of watch wearer. Uh, but it, I just thought it was great for this project. So I've I've cut it up. I'm using the bits I want. The other pieces, uh, I, would, I think I use a bit in a, in a minute. And the other pieces will be used for other projects at other dates. So again, just some hot glue on there. Add it where I want it. Uh, it just fits really well with the project and yeah so we're getting getting near finishing now so it's just sort of like I say keep adding more and more pieces don't don't be afraid if you've got sort of old bits like this to sort of cut into them and sort of make them what you want and I've cut the where I've cut the remaining part of this the beads are loose on there and they might fall off so you can see that I'm putting some hot glue on the ends and that's just to stop the beads sliding off of each end but yeah, don't be afraid to sort of cut into old costume jewellery bits or old pieces or old objects that you might not ever use for anything else. Don't be afraid to use them uh, and think think of them as more than what they are and separate pieces. And, you know, this, this is now going to create something from one of the other shelves. You know, it's just so from that one piece, I've got these and I've still got other bits left to do stuff with for another project on another day. So these bits of um, plain MDF, now if you haven't got plain MDF, uh, obviously bits of cardboard, again, any object that you don't necessarily want to see on your project or whatever else, I'm putting these at the bottom and the idea with this is, is I want the photo, I don't want the photo to be flat on the back of the tray, I want the photo to sit at an angle like it's propped on the tray, so the best way to do that is by putting something behind it, so I've put something behind the bottom, uh, you can use foam pads, you can use foam, you can pretty much use any object that's the right depth that you want it to be, uh, you know, and pop it behind it. I happen to have lots of MDF laying around because I'm cutting MDF all day long, so uh, it was the perfect thing to use. This is some, 
is it sizal? I don't think it's sizal because sizal's normally a lot thinner than this. This is more like a wickery sort of. It's like sizal, but it's a wickery stuff. It might still be called sizal. It might just be a different type of sizal. Uh, again, I don't want it in its bright white. Well, it's not white cream in its bright cream state it looked too new and too pristine so you saw a bit of dry brushing with black it just takes the edge of it this is definitely sizal this is gray sizal and like i said i don't know if the other stuff is still called sizal uh but you can see lily's little hands here <laughs> this is obviously not from today i videoed it a little while ago but um <laughs> lily's quite often out in the studio and as she can see she was having a good look at what was on the little shelves uh so yeah i ended up going with for the lighter one the light one that was dulled down with the black just to sort of take the edge off it and these are the bits that are sort of all in there i was really pleased with how it looked it's quite enjoyable sort of finding the different bits to go in the jars to sort of give it the effect that i wanted it to have that's it that's the finished project it was as easy as that um if you like it please hit the like button feel free to comment below and hopefully you'll subscribe for our next video take care